Hello, everyone. Uh, I am back. Uh, evidently, my phone doesn't want to cooperate today. So I am now uh, outside, maybe in a cooler breeze. Um, here you go. Here's our beautiful garden. So I'll continue, and this is part of Herbert's Saturday too. So I'm sorry, I'm so sorry that uh, the broadcast got broken up today. Um, it is a beautiful, it's beautiful out here in the garden too. Uh, and this garden too was part of that um, Herbert Satterley's um, romanticized vision. When he first bought the place in 1910, um, the, uh, the, this garden was mainly a, uh, you know, a basic farm garden, vegetable garden, strawberries. Um, it didn't look like this, that's for sure. So uh, he went about changing um, changes, added a brick wall to the back. Um, most of this garden now is planted according, as best we can, uh, with uh, the way Herbert Satterley and Mabel, uh, his daughter, had it. So this is also that romanticized view of what life was really like here at Satterley. Um, the gardens uh, did not, in 1910, did not look like this. Um, much simpler and much plainer. Uh, of course, um, Herbert Satterley um, wanted to recreate that, um, you know, a uh, gentleman farmer. So he was just as much enamored with the farming operations here uh, having because he did own a farm in Connecticut uh, also in uh, upstate New York and Connecticut um, so um, you know he was all into that romanticized idea of farming too a gentleman farmer meaning you don't do the actual labor you manage the farm um, so this this part of the the uh, museum today is like the, is uh, because of Herbert Satterley's changes and also the brick we know the brick was added Herbert Satterley added to the house uh, um, uh, multiple times and changed the look of the house as we know um, he celebrated the plater period so he had of course a lot of the 19th century pieces except the slave cabin that still remains um, taken down. So, so sorry, this is, uh, you know, how it's broken up today. I'm so sorry, I probably lost people doing this. I apologize. All right, can't win them all though. It was working fine before, but it is still a pretty day out. So I am standing outside where I was, if I can get a picture. So this is still the new room here. Must have been getting too hot or something. Um, but I'm getting glare here, let's see. Yep. Yeah, you can see that's the picture um, that I was standing in front of. And mainly the, in the house, his, his parents were very, Herbert Saddle, his parents and his family were very important to him. From all accounts, um, Herbert and Louisa uh, Pierpont Morgan had uh, a loving marriage uh, and they had two daughters, um, Mabel and Eleanor. Um, they had, according to letters uh, left over at the Morgan Library, um, uh, by all accounts, uh, they had a loving marriage. And he has a lot of uh, f uh, pictures and portraits of his parents in the house. So his, he writes, um, he, he seems kind of in his writing to me to have some melancholy to, you know, be a little bit um, sad sometimes. Uh, thinking about people he's lost in his life, um, his, 
you know his parents um, so so he can he can be very reflective in his writing uh, of course, Herbert Satterley, like all owners of Satterley, held government posts. Herbert Satterley was no exception. Uh, he did serve as uh, uh, an assistant secretary to the Navy, Navy under Teddy Roosevelt for the last months of his administration. Um, uh, he was friends with uh, Herbert Satterley, served in... Um, the Spanish-American War uh, with some of his buddies, John Jacob Astor, um, uh, who perished on the Titanic. So, so um, very, uh, you know, they're very uh, wealthy, very wealthy. But most of our, most of our um, legends and lore at Sorry. You, that can be traced, and I try to trace them. Where did they originate, and when did they start being told? We have a lot of legends and lore about pirates and different things uh, that happened here, and um, basically, not, pretty much none of that is true. But the stories start originating, uh, and the story goes that this uh, pirate came while they were eat while the platers were eating dinner, and you know. Uh, uh, they were attacked by pirates, and George Plater III made quick work of, um, uh, I think his name was Long Arm or something, quick work of him, you know, to, at the dinner table, like it was, uh, you know, it was a very romanticized story. So why, um, why um, romanticize and make up a story like this? Uh, can you tell me why? Uh, you would do that um, just to tell tell tall tales um, but the, some of these though some of these uh, romanticized stories start becoming uh, accepted as the real world sometimes so the way things really were and um, what Herbert Satterley in in his day forgets uh you know he, he because he's, he doesn't want to remember the 19th century that much um he he leaves off uh, uh when we romanticize things we leave off the stuff we don't want to remember and that that's basically what herbert Satterley did um he's he's leaving off the unfortunate and uh the bad things that happened like the civil war and uh, slavery. He doesn't want to talk about that kind of stuff. And and basically, um, you know, Sodderly in ways uh, reminds me of Colonial Williamsburg, uh, especially in the old days. Um, you know, nobody nobody uh, hangs fruit at Christmas in the real colonial times, right? <laughs> Everybody knows that. So that the reason they do that is to get visitors there. That's how it started. They wanted to get visitors there at Christmas. So, you know, um, uh, that's what museums aren't museums unless somebody comes to visit them. So some of this is a, is a way to, to get visitors to come to your museum, is, uh, is make it more romantic than it really was. And um, hopefully that tide is changing a little bit and that people l love the beauty, like today we love the beauty of the gardens, but we want to hear the real story, right? We want to hear about all the people. Uh, we want to hear, you know, that Walter Bar Barber signed, was the one that signed the bill of, was the witness the bill of sale to, for Herbert Satter uh, Satterley when he bought the place. Beautiful handwriting, Walter Barber, there he goes. Um, um, and, um, and the, you know, um, the structure that he put together. Now, when Herbert Satterley, of course, owned Satterley until his death in 1947. And I must say that from what I read, uh, people really mourned his, his death here. Uh, because um, he, of course, uh, having the funds to keep Soderley's farm employed 
and uh, farmers employed and workers employed. Um, that was a big deal, especially during the Depression. Uh, and once he died and his daughter took over uh, a few years later, uh, bought the estate, Mabel, um, uh, it was different. Um, Mabel Ingalls was not uh, as into the farming. In, in fact, she uh, sold off a lot of the farmland um, or gave it to her daughter, who, who then gave it back to Soderly. But, um, but she wasn't as into that, although they still, tr they were still telling the, the romanticized stories um, about Soderly. Um, we don't really start moving away from that until much later in the museum's history. So much, much later. Um, so, but Herbert Soderly, what he did do um, is he basically, if, if he hadn't have come along with this money and bought this house and circumstances brought him here uh, through the, his connections to the Episcopal uh, Church and his cousin, Henry Yates Satterley, um, who was the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese in Washington, D.C. So if, um, if that hadn't happened, he hadn't come here uh, and bought the place, uh, I, could, I could say with surety that it wouldn't be here uh, now. Um, it would have already fallen into disrepair and been something else. Um, uh, and, um, you know, so that's a, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of a, some friction there. Somebody who romanticizes history yet he is, he is uh, because of that, you know, we have, we can remember all the people now that once lived here. So we, are, we don't leave it there, the story there, uh, the way Herbert Satterley told it. Um, we uh, expand the story to include everyone and uncover what Herbert Satterley was trying to forget, right? Herbert Satterley was trying to forget uh, um, that part of history and remember the glorious um, um, with a you know with a white ruling class and uh, and all of that so um, I it, that's what some of the one of the reasons that it makes Soderly so complicated I mean it's it's so complicated to interpret <laughs> because of all the different periods uh, unheard of that a museum covers this much time in history unheard of nobody does that um, so um, and it makes it complicated uh, and the, the main question is you know uh, the confusion between Saturday and Soderly so Soderly is a place Saturday is a name that's how I remember it um, so uh, Mabel, once Herbert Satterley, um, some of the things that we hear in, in the oral tradition and history too is Herbert Satterley always had a gun at his bedside. And um, when I was doing research on Herbert Satterley, I found that um, one time in New York, there was a shooter that came in when they were at church and uh, started shooting up the place. This is in the early 20th century. Um, and uh, they shot Herbert Satterley's friend who was serving communion with him. And uh, so that happened. And then I found out that there was actually uh, an armed uh, burglary when they were in the house in their farm in Connecticut. So to me, it makes perfect sense Knowing all that, it makes perfect sense why Herbert Sato would have a sidearm, uh, you know, a, a gun by his bedside anywhere he went. Because um, he was traumatized, evidently, uh, from those two incidents. And it scared him, so um, he protected himself. So I just think that's interesting. That's one of the things, you know, what makes people tick. I'm getting good air traffic noise today with a nice noisy bird up there. 
I like that kind of air traffic. So, um, so knowing knowing how how he um, how he viewed things, and uh, of course, uh, uh, think of uh, the um, uh, race relations of the early nineteenth. Early 19th, uh, early 20th century, uh, not too good, um, and uh, uh, everything's segregated. Uh, many people uh, are sharecropping, like the scribers. They were sharecroppers uh, after slavery. Um, so, um, and some people that worked at Soderley weren't even allowed inside the manor house. Um, um, and there were some, there's still bitterness over that. Uh, and that bitterness is passed down. That trauma is passed down. Um, but, you know, uh, where I hear stories of the not children, you know, when the Herbert Satterley wasn't actually here, you know, they used to, the kids used to play all over the inside of the manor house. But yes, the, yet there were some people that were not allowed into the manor house or to be seen that much. You weren't to be seen that much out of sight. Um, you had to be quiet. So, um, so those kinds of dynamics go on at Soderley. Um, so there, there's stories and some of it's some good, some bad. And, um, uh, and that's what makes Soderley so complicated. <laughs> um, we get a lot of Saturday uh, people coming, and we have Saturday descendants still, and we we get a lot of uh, Saturday uh, people coming from both Europe and America. Uh, they had uh, the Saturday name. They had uh, someone dedicated to their family tree that has gone way back, and all the most of the branches. So we do have active. Saturday descendants trying to help us save the place and uh, Herbert Saturday one thing that we did had in common he, he and I uh, he kept inviting Plater descendants here all the time and uh, people from Louisiana and different places uh, he'd look up Plater descendants and invite them to come to Soderley he wanted them interested in the place um, so I, I, I think that is is something that you know we still have pictures of them and pictures of those people and now we know some of their children and some of their grandchildren that are active descendants so that's really that's really neat i think um that part that part of the legacy um so uh once again um uh i i wanted you to think about so um um Think about a story in American history, and um, uh, is is it told from different perspectives? Because you look at Herbert Satterley's perspective, and then you've got to look at other perspectives, like Walter Barber's perspective, right? What was his perspective of the place, and his son and grandson, uh, three generations? What was the, what were the Knott's perspectives on the place? Um, and, uh, but in their own way, you know, they cared for the place. Maybe some people didn't love it, uh, but, uh, they cared for the place and this was their home. Uh, and they lived here for many years for multiple generations. So, um, so it is common ground, uh, with the good and the bad. So, um, and I always thought Herbert Satterley basically was a very handsome man. Uh, my personal opinion um, and um, and uh, like I said uh, from all accounts they had a loving marriage um, uh, later in his life when uh, it was it wasn't as cool anymore to be ultra rich and taxes were coming and social change was coming um, and uh, his wife Louisa died before him so uh, once again, he was despondent and actually took his own life. Um, and it made people very sad. 
uh, to lose him uh, at Son at Sonnerly, uh the people that that lived here um, because he had supported them for decades um, where other people didn't have didn't have any job um, flaws and all flaws and all okay so um, I hope um, you think about you think about other things in history that have been romanticized and if you look at any story in history that has been passed down regularly um, it can easily get romanticized and we can easily fall into that where we're not uh, hearing uh, the complications that went into some kind of decision or historical event or who it is how really helping or hurting uh, sometimes in patriotic fervor uh, these kinds of issues and these kinds of stories get lost but uh, it's our job to find them again and put them all together in the same package um, won't be pretty wrapping paper but um, a lot of times but it, it's it's what what we need to do so I hope I'm I'm so sorry that I get got my phone overheated and I got uh, interrupted a couple of times but I hope um, you uh, learned something about Herbert Satterley and Louisa there's lots more to tell but uh, I don't I don't I'm, I'm afraid my phone will overheat before I get done so I will let you go here and I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and I will stay well and I will see you next Thursday with a new battery in my phone that doesn't overheat okay all right see you later have a wonderful week bye bye